Welcome to Dead Time. I hope you're ready for some hauntingly intriguing and mysterious stories from beyond. Throughout this show, we'll explore the Quinty region in search of stories from beyond. Some explained. And many unexplained. Do you believe we are visited by the other side? There are skeptics everywhere, but what we're about to show you might change your mind. On today's show, we'll travel to Bloomfield, Ontario. Angeline's Inn & Restaurant, located in Bloomfield, Ontario, has quite the storied history, dating all the way back to the early 1800s. The history begins with the Quaker family who were responsible for protecting and providing safety for the natives and slaves who were being hunted down. The natives that lived on the Quaker's land were free to perform the rituals, and some of the people that lived and died there left behind their energy. That uh, seems a little crazy to me though. Katrina, what do you think? Absolutely not, Mike. I like to think that such an existence is possible. I don't think that energy can ever cease to exist. It only, our existence only alters, and I think that's what makes me so curious about all of this. Uh, yeah, I guess me too. But I'm sticking to my ways. I'm not believing, and this story, I'm not believing it either. I think we should let our audience decide that for themselves. Okay, well, let's take a look. The quaint town of Bloomfield in Picton is home to many bed and breakfasts. One of the most popular B&Bs is Angeline's. Some would say Angeline's is haunted, but property owner Mirtha Feller feels differently. She has dedicated her life to studying supernatural energies. To her, these beings are not ghosts, but the essence of what any living thing has left behind. Her mysterious interactions with these energies have led her to create many beautiful works of art in her backyard. I studied uh, this ghost, which I don't love as a, as a word. I studied this for a very, very long time. And I uh, found out that, that we have not to do with persons, but with energy. It's all a kind of energy. Sometimes people are saying they saw ghosts in the house. It's not the person, it's only the energy of this person which is still in the house. And the reason why it's because there is something they don't want to leave. They, or it can be anger, it can be too much love for somebody or it can be greed. All these are kind of things who hold back the energy to be liberated. When, uh, when I got here, uh, I found that the, back, the backyard here has a very heavy energy. I didn't understand why and what happens there until I made some researches. And uh, what came out was that the whole space here was a space uh, for, the, for the Indians, first of all, the slaves. And sometimes they were very hunted. And here, on this special space, was a family, um, a Quaker family. It goes back, back in the 1800s, okay? What they did, they allow slaves and uh, Indians to come in and they were protected here because they were Quakers. And nobody could done harm to those people because they are here and the Quakers gave them the back yard there to leave there were huts and whatever they had to live in and um, they they were free even to do their rites and uh, all kinds of rituals so they had a space for each thing. Where the labyrinth is, was a getting together. Just everybody came together there. After these people have passed on, their energies stay. Mirtha says she's always been sensitive to those energies and through her dreams, they have guided her in many tasks. 
and one night I dreamt, uh, I had a, a very strange dream. It was a very stormy night. The, the sky was dark, 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 and in the middle went just one line, really clear line, and the funnel came up. And I made, I dreamed I made a labyrinth there on this place. I couldn't tell nobody why there, because I was guided to there. And then I got uh, another image who told me exactly the space where I have to put a fire on. Where the fireplace is, there was a, uh, the fire, the, the place for the sacred fires. And uh, I was in connection with the uh, with, um, Indian here from the, uh, from Napanee. And he said, I would like to make a solstice uh, ceremony, ritual in your in your garden. I don't know why he, he told me that, because I said nothing to nobody. I said, yeah, okay, where would you like to have it? And he went right away to the place where the fireplace is. Nope. He made a hole in the earth like the Indians made it, because to connect with Mother Earth. Hmm? And there we made our ceremony. And it was really wonderful. Mirtha believes every living thing leaves behind energy when it dies. Being open and listening to those energies will help guide us through life. Sometimes the light beings, I call them not energy or ghosts or what, but light beings, they show you exactly where you have to go, what you have to do to satisfy them and to uh, help in the evolution, in the humanity evolution and the, the, the earth evolution. I think that is what we have to learn is to listen to our inner self, to listen to our intuition. Uh, not to be afraid. Well, Mike, what did you think about that story? Well, it was interesting to say the least. I didn't see or hear anything that leads me to believe in anything from the supernatural, though. Well, how about the messages she received about where to build her garden and sacred fire? And what about the history of the land? The land is rich with history, yes. But the settlers have been living here since the early 1800s, and the natives even before that. We can say the same about here in Belleville. They don't have any stories of the same significance. We'd like to know what you thought of that story, and perhaps you have a few of your own you'd like to share. Email us at deadtimetv at gmail.com. After the break, we'll be back with some interesting information on unexplainable events from around the world. Welcome back to Dead Time. With so many stories about ghosts, ghouls, and other mysterious creatures here in the Quinty region alone, you can imagine the endless stories from around the world. James Bowler has become our specialist on stories from far away that make up a haunting world. Around the world, humanity has forever been fascinated with the paranormal. Since the beginning of man, stories have been told to keep laws upheld or to keep children from misbehaving. But is it possible some of these myths from the past actually have some truth to them? One story has existed since 